Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the basics of topology. Now I'm making this video based on a question that I received on my previous video where I explained how you can start any object using a cube, right? And people basically said, well, why are you doing that? I mean, a sphere is right there, right? Why would you create a sphere using a cube? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you. So we're going to talk about topology, what it is, why it needs to be clean and what the benefits are, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cube. If you look at this cube, this is a set of vertices, edges, and faces. Now, if you're completely new, I'll show you what this is. If I right click on a face, this is a face. A face is a combination of multiple edges like these, right? And they basically um, create a closed in area, in this case, a, a square, right? And then these edges are connected with the vertices, these guys on the corners. Now, in this case, we have a perfect square, which is this guy. So you could say that's pretty clean, right? Okay, it is, yeah. But if you want to deform this object, uh, let's say you want to twist it, you would go to object mode, you would go to deform, nonlinear, and twist. And if you go to the attribute editor and start to twist it, it does exactly that, right? So you could say, oh, well, it's a perfect topology. Well, not really, because you're twisting this cube, but the edge is going down here, the vertical edges, it's a complete straight shot. There's no flowing line, none of that. Okay, so we're going to create another cube. We're going to go in here and let's add some subdivision. We're going to insert edge loop. Let's go in and set that to, I don't know, let's say five. So we're going to do five in all directions. And as such, we're basically creating a little squares, right? And let's go in here and do that again. We're going to go to the form. We're going to go to nonlinear. We're going to go to twist. And let's open up the attribute editor and let's do that again. And now suddenly, instead of a straight shot down, you see a flowing edge. Now, the edge is flowing, but you could ask yourself, is it a perfect clean flow? Well, you can clearly see where the edges are because that's where this flowing line becomes a bit pointy, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new cube and we're gonna move it over here and we're gonna bump up that subdivision level, okay? So let's go to, I don't know, 10 or so. So we're going to go to 10 by 10 and 10. There you have it. All right. Let's go up. Uh, we're going to go to deform. We're going to go to nonlinear. We're going to go to twist once again. And let's do that one more time. Now here you see a very smooth line in that twist, right? So you're probably saying, well, okay, so I just need to add a bunch of edges everywhere. Well, no, because this guy is fairly high poly compared to this guy and compared to this guy, right? Now that has an impact on your system because calculations need to be done. Each and every vertex position needs to be calculated. So you need to use edges where needed. Now, let's say I model a cube and I'm going to 3D print it right do i need additional subdivision no not at all right i don't need any other subdivision than what i have right here because i'm not deforming it i'm not doing anything other to it than you know printing it okay uh, if i want to model a character and i wanted to animate then i would for example uh, need a higher mesh uh, around uh, the eyes and the nose and the face uh, or the mouth right because this is going to be deforming a lot. But let's say in the middle of the torso, maybe this could be fine, right? And on the bottom of the feet, maybe this could be fine. So that's kind of how you manage your topology. Now, there's another thing I need to explain, and that is n-gons. So what are n-gons? Um, this is a polygon, right? This is a polygon. So it's basically an object or a surface with multiple uh, sides. And n gone, n stands for a number that we don't know, but we know it's more than four, okay? So if I go in here, let's say to, uh, what am I gonna take here? Okay, we'll take another cube, why not? All right, 
And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the modeling toolkit and then we're gonna take uh, the multi-cut tool and we'll move this over here. And then I'm just gonna hold down shift and cut, oops, not that one. Sorry about that. Do something like this and do something like this. All right. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. If you go and look at this guy right here, how many vertices do we have? We're going to go to vertex. We got one, we got two, we got three, we got four, we got five. So this is an end gone, right? Now, why do 3D programs hate end gons? Well, because in uh, mathematical calculations, triangles, which is half of a square, and square uh, surfaces are much easier to calculate, right? And this can be a nightmare, especially when you are deforming. And uh, I'll, I'll show you, right? If I go in here and I go to the forum and we're gonna go to nonlinear and twist once again, right? And we start to twist this, it's looking very, very funky, all right? Very funky. Okay, so uh, just to summarize, right? Um, topology, it needs to be clean for a couple of reasons. It needs to be balanced, right? It, it shouldn't have any end gons and that's really important when you are going to deform your surface, all right? So yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, it's, it's uh, I would say pretty basic, um, but nevertheless, extremely important. And it applies to every 3D program out there, pretty much, right? So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did. Hit that sub button if you want to see more. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.